Hi, my name is Anna Acunto from the University of Texas at Austin. In this video, I will model and demonstrate how to complete Math Fact flashcards, which is the first activity in the Pirate Math Equation Quest small group intervention with total difference, change, and equal group schemas. The focus of this video is Math Fact flashcards for small group intervention. In the small group intervention, a single teacher works with three to four students during every lesson. Math Fact Flashcards is the first activity in the small group intervention. Each lesson in the small group intervention includes five components. Math Fact Flashcards, Equation Quest, Buccaneer Problems, Ship Shape Sorting, and Jolly Roger Review. Today, I'll demonstrate the first component, Math Fact Flashcards. For the Math Fact Flashcards activity, you'll need the following five materials the Counting Up Addition and Subtraction poster, a timer, the Addition and Subtraction Math Fact Flashcards, the Math Fact Flashcard Graph, and a colored pencil or crayon. At this point, you may be asking yourself, which flashcard should I use? That's a great question. For the small group intervention, I begin with the single digit Addition and Subtraction Flashcards. I use single digit Addition and Subtraction Flashcards for lessons 1 through 30. On the left, we see an example of a single digit addition flashcard. On the right is an example of a single digit subtraction flashcard. In the small group intervention, these cards are used for lessons 1 through 30. The small group intervention combines addition and subtraction flashcards together throughout, the les throughout lessons 1 through 30 to ensure students receive both addition and subtraction flashcards during each lesson. For students who may struggle, you can start with addition flashcards, and as they become more fluent with their addition facts, you can add in subtraction flashcards. In lesson 31, we introduce multiplication and division flashcards. On the lower left-hand side of the screen is an example of a multiplication flashcard. Next to it is an example of a division flashcard. After lesson 31, the small group intervention introduces a combination of multiplication and division flashcards during each lesson. Similarly to lessons 1 through 30 with the addition and subtraction flashcards, students who struggle can start with the multiplication flashcards in lesson 31, and as they become more fluent with their multiplication facts, you can add in the division flashcards. So to summarize, for lessons 1 through 30, the teacher uses the addition and subtraction flashcards, and for lessons 31 through 39, the teacher uses the multiplication and division flashcards. Anytime you complete Math Fact flashcards, you use the following steps, the same five steps each time. For step one, all the way over here, complete the first trial of flashcards with the student for one minute in a round robin. During the first trial, students answer as many flashcards correctly as they can in one minute. For step two, count the number of flashcards from trial one. For step three, complete a second trial of flashcards with the students for one minute in a round robin. During the second trial, students answer as many flashcards correctly as they can in one minute. The teacher encourages students to beat their score from the first trial. In step four, count the flashcards in trial two. And finally, for step five, the teacher selects a well-behaved student who worked hard during Math Fact flashcards to graph the highest score from the two trials. Before the activity begins, make sure you have your Counting Up Addition and Subtraction poster displayed so that students can use this poster to help them answer the flash cards if needed. The picture of the Counting Up poster is shown here to remind you to display the poster before the activity. Step one says one minute timing. The teacher begins by setting the timer for one minute. When the timer is set, the teacher says go. Once the timer starts, the students take turns answering as many flashcards correctly as they can until the timer beeps. When you implement the Math Fact flashcard in a small group, we use a round robin to have students take turns answering questions in a circle. During the first trial, the teacher holds up one flashcard at a time, shows the flashcard to the first student in the group, and allows the student to answer. If the student answers the card correctly, the teacher puts the card in the correct discard pile. If the student answers the flashcard incorrectly, the teacher instructs the student to use his or her counting up strategies to conti and continues to assist the student until he or she arrives at the correct answer. Then the teacher places the flashcard in the correct discard pile. 
Once the first student correctly answers a flashcard, the teacher shows the next flashcard to the next student in the group, following the same steps for the first student for the correct and incorrect answers. The teacher continues to go around the circle asking the student one flashcard at a time. At the end of the one minute timing, the teacher says stop. If any student in the group is struggling to answer a question, the teacher can direct the student to the counting up poster and remind him or her to use counting up strategies. If you're not familiar with how to use counting up for addition and subtraction, you can view the video entitled Counting Up Addition and Subtraction, which is linked in the description. Step two says count flashcards. The teacher and the students count the number of correct flashcards in the correct discard pile. You can allow the students to count the cards with you to provide an additional opportunity to practice counting skills. The teacher then tells the students that they answered so many flashcards correctly and asks, asks the students if they think they can beat the score for the next round or second trial. Step three says one minute timing. The second trial follows the same procedure as step one. The teacher begins by setting the timer for one minute. When the timer is set, the teacher says go. Once the timer starts, the students take turns answering as many flashcards as they can using the round robin until the timer beeps. During the second trial, the teacher holds up, the flash, holds up one flashcard at a time, shows the flashcard to the first student in the group, and allows the student to answer. If the student answers the flashcard correctly, the teacher puts the flashcard in a correct discard pile. If the student answers the flashcard incorrectly, the teacher instructs the student to use the counting up strategies seen here and continues to assist the student until he or she arrives at the correct answer. Then the teacher places the flashcard in the correct discard pile. Once the first student correctly answers a flashcard, the teacher shows the next flashcard to the next student in the group, following the same steps as the first student for the correct and incorrect answers. The teacher continues to go around the circle asking one student one flashcard at a time. At the end of the one minute timing, the teacher says stop. If any student in the group is struggling to answer a question, the teacher can direct the student to the counting up poster and remind him or her to use the counting up strategies. Again, if you're not familiar with these strategies, you can view the video entitled Counting Up Addition and Subtraction, which is linked in the description. Step four says count flashcards. In step four, the teacher follows the same procedure as in step two. The teacher and students count the number of correct flashcards in the correct discard pile. You can allow the students to count the cards with you to provide an additional opportunity to practice counting skills. The teacher then tells the students that if they answer that they answered so many flashcards correctly and they determine the highest score for the day. Finally, step five says graph the highest score. The teacher can assign a different student to color the graph each day, or the teacher can color the graph depending on timing. The teacher can also select the student who exhibited on-task behavior and who worked hard to color the graph. The teacher, or selected student, graphs the highest score from the two trials by coloring the number of boxes to represent the group's highest score on the graph. For example, if the students answered 10 flashcards correctly in the first trial and 8 flashcards correctly in the second trial, the selected student or teacher graphs the higher score of 10 on the graph by coloring 10 boxes. This graphing component allows the student to self monitor allows students to self monitor their progress throughout the lessons and helps students to practice shading a graph. The graphing is always the student's favorite part of this this activity. They love to try to beat their high score. They're really excited when they improve and can visually see their progress on the graph. So now that I've talked about the five steps of the math fact flashcard activity, let's watch an example of a teacher implementing the math fact flashcard activity with a small group of students. As you watch, notice how the teacher uses the round robin method to make sure each student is provided an equal number of flashcards to answer. So as you watch, pay close attention to the following. The teacher sets the timer for one minute and shows the first student one flashcard at a time. The teacher uses multiplication and division flashcards together. Remember, the teacher introduces multiplication and division flashcards during lesson 31. The teacher uses a round robin method to ensure each student has the same number of opportunities to answer. The teacher uses specific questioning to help students who answer incorrectly to arrive at the correct answer. And finally, the teacher assigns a student to graph the highest score.
In this video, I demonstrated how to implement our math fact flashcard activity in the Pirate Math Equation Quest Small Group Intervention with Total Difference, Change, and Equal Group Schemas. For more information on how to use the, the Counting Up for Addition and Subtraction strategy, you can click on the link in the description below. I'd like to recognize IES, the University of Texas at Austin, and the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk. Without their support, this research would not have been possible. Thanks for watching.